watching the Original Music Podcast. Here we go. Episode 53 tonight. We've got uh, Six String Revolver out of uh, Utah. I'm Ray Hems. This is uh, Rick Gatsman's with us tonight. And uh, how are you guys doing tonight in Utah? Very well. Doing great. Yeah. Great. Uh, is there any snow in Utah tonight? No, not not where we're at. No? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, maybe. yeah. Okay. 50 miles north, there might be some light. Maybe. Yeah, I, I live 50 miles north from you guys. These guys live in the desert. I live in the mountains a little bit. Okay, so it, you have to drive a little bit to get the rehearsal? I do. Everyone kind of drives a little except Raven, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the beauty of having the studio yeah. at your at your place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Good. I, I got a studio making these three guys drive to my house be kind of shitty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unless you, I wouldn't. Yeah, unless you did a couple of uh, a couple of days, if you did like an overnight and uh and did you know did some recording a sleepover yeah, jam sleepover, yeah. yeah do you have like yeah. a sleepover? <laughs> no no sleepover. sleepovers <laughs> let's jam and fight yeah no doubt. <laughs> so let's get into it um uh six string revolver that's a great great band name yeah. um how long have you guys been a band and and uh uh what's the backstory on on the on the band no, you want me to say? Well, um, me and Dave here uh, were in another band uh, previous for, for several years, many years. And uh, we just decided we wanted to uh, do something a little different. And, um, and so we uh, got the best, what we think are the best players anywhere that we that we can find. We And we've been around the scene, this scene for a long time. And we were like, who, are, who can we get that we really click with, we really vibe with? Um, that are, are some of the best players. And we went, we actually went through a couple other guitar players and stuff. And, and, you know, you gotta have that special magic. You know what I mean, yeah, man? When you're, you're playing it, if you don't vibe, it's not going to work. Yeah. When we brought uh, all of us together, it, it vibed like it was magic. We, we knew it when we first uh, hit, hit the first notes. And um, so, uh, I mean, less than a year we've been together now, but uh, it's it just, it's just clicking, man. Gotcha. Yeah. Ray coined oh, that. You know what it's called? It's called the locker room. Yeah, the locker room. The locker well, room. It's been since August since I came into the band. We don't count any time pre Hawkeye. We don't know. We don't count pre Hawkeye. <laughs> yeah, <pre-Hawkeye. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> never, never got a gig without Hawkeye. Yeah. 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 Well, that is, uh, that's extremely important that when you get together musically, there's harm, it's harmonious. Um, but it's more important that as humans, you like each other yeah and that you're on the same page it, it'd be very difficult <laughs> it'd be very difficult to uh and i've done it i've been in bands with with people that personally i wasn't in line with and, i think we all have and it just yeah. kind of doesn't work yeah um yep. the, the music that uh, we're going to listen to tonight um is is that this lineup and you you recorded with this lineup Unfortunately, no. It, it's the lineup with uh, Dave and I. Um, we are uh, the music we played previous, uh, but we kind of adopted some of those songs to kind of get us up and rolling. So yeah. we're not really a, a cover band or anything like that. We needed songs to start with, so we started with those old songs. Um, so we do play those songs, but the direction of the band is sort of going just slightly different. Although it's it's similar to what what uh, you're going to be hearing, but we do play those songs still. Yeah. Well, it was a big grind in rock. Uh, yeah, kind of a. It was definitely rock. It had a little bit of a southern tinge to it, and we'll mm-hmm. get into it when we listen to uh, "Bad Boy." But uh, um, when you record, is there a studio that you go to, or do you guys uh, produce by, uh, yourselves? You're in it, bro. This is our recording studio, but we use um, we use a, a producer and an engineer outside of here. So we're so Chuck here is the. Uh, the 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 main engineer who mics everything up and, I, and then I press record on the on the board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then we send it off to somebody else to to, to get it mixed. I mean, all of us have studios, but sometimes we'll do parts separate. Mm-hmm. I think the stuff that 
we've started writing that's not the stuff you have, the newer stuff that's yeah. not quite ready. It's, it's slightly heavier maybe than what that is, but not a lot heavier. Yeah. Does it still have that southern twang yeah, to it? Yeah, we got him singing. It's always going to be southern. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I asked me, what kind of music do you play? Basically, I asked someone else because someone that listened to us. Said, Good luck uh, to answer that. It's southern rock without the redneck, but it's more patriotic. Fair enough. I like that. I like that. I would say a lot of words, a lot of words for a bumper sticker. That's why yeah. we yeah. yeah, it might be a whole new genre. Who knows? Yeah, um, yeah. This 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 southern southern patriot rock kind of a thing. There you go. You know? I like it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we definitely have uh, harder influences, you know, uh, and it, each one of us have a has a sort of a unique influence. So it's definitely pulling the music into a direction that uh, is, is I think, is uh, you can't really define other than it sounds like Six String Revolver. And I, I think that's a good, good that place to go. That is a good go. thing. Yeah. Makes it unique. You got your own colors. It's, yeah. it's the hardest question to answer. <laughs> yeah. For every band that yeah. comes on. And, it you is. know, it's the worst question to ask as an interviewer. It's like, uh, what, so uh, what does your band sound like? Yeah. What would uh, you consider yeah. yourself to be? It, it sucks um, because it always comes back to well, it sounds like uh, it sounds like Giza or it sounds like Hope Singer. Mm-hmm. It just sounds like us because of our influences. Um, Dave, um, something tells me you might like Slayer. <laughs> Sl- Slayer and the Raiders. <laughs> Good mix. Yeah. Yeah. Is- Terry King wears jersey a lot. A lot. Yeah. A lot. So, so what, what what are some influences, Dave, that you grew up? Um, uh, you're a bass player, so wh- who were your guys? No, no, he's no, a no, drummer. no, 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 he's a drummer. He's oh, he's the player. drummer. <laughs> oh, wait, now, okay, I'm confused. Okay, I thought confused. I thought you were the drummer. <laughs> All right, so so who's on first? Yeah. I don't know who's on second. <laughs> um, so Dave is drums. Chuck yeah. is bass. Um, so on drums, Dave, I'm trying to get a question to Dave here, you know, because I like his shirt. Yeah. Hey. Um, what's uh what what was your your what did you cut your teeth on um i grew up playing jazz wow and I'm, so you're a good and drummer I'm he's lying from jazz. he's uh, are you serious because i was a rock fan are you serious and, that you played jazz yeah in fact i ended up in uh i, I went to college on a music scholarship wow and was uh, a percussionist with the symphony, with the orchestra, wow. uh, pep band, marching band, everything. And uh, I walked away from all that when I figured out that they wanted me to be a band teacher. Oh. And and so I wanted to be in show business. Right. And so I was fortunate enough to uh, hook up with a dude named Paul Schwartz out of Las Vegas and he got me into the show business role and I've been playing Vegas forever. And then I did three world tours with a country band Wow! before I started into the hard rock scene and then met Raven. Hmm. Wow. That's a, that's quite, it, that's quite the journey. Yeah. 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 Actually. It's yeah. His fault. Yeah. He did. Yeah. You're so welcome, lady. Can, can can you say who it was you were you were playing with? Yeah, who were you playing with? Uh, I it was uh, back then in the in the country band. It was uh, I can't even remember. <laughs> and you do you were with him for how long? Twenty years ago. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's All right, you get a pass. Then. It, it's been a long time. Um, and we entertained for the military, so oh, gotcha. we did all Bosnia, Kosovo, Germany, right. Austria, Kuwait, Iraq, South wow. Korea. That's U.S.O. Awesome. stuff. Yeah. That's cool. Kind of U.S., though. It's more NWR. Same thing. Yeah. They're not connected. Yeah. yeah. Now, now we have a, we have, we've got another uh, fellow um, um, military vet. Uh, give us a little background on, on you. That's Chuck, right? Uh, so I started, ironically, also playing jazz in high school. Wow. Uh, I started off, basically, I remember the first bass I bought. My grandma gave me the money. This is back when, I don't want to date myself, but you could go into Sears, but they didn't actually have shit in Sears. Yeah, just the catalog. Take it out of the catalog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Got a little bass and 
I joined the jazz band and that was back when essentially they would give you the rhythm and they give you the chord and you had to make up the notes and shit. Yeah. So I did that in high school, went in the army for two years and I played, I stayed in the army active duty for about eight years playing punk country, everything basically. Wow. I basically had to get a new band every two years because the army, every time I get a band good, they'd ship me somewhere else. Hmm. And then so, you got out of- you'd have to find new musicians at that point, huh? With right. that, with that said, I, I've been playing drums for 46 years and I bought my first guitar from Sears and Roebuck. Was it Harmony by chance? Yeah, Harmony. No, it was a white one, man. There was no fucking name. No name at all. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's your show, man. You can say whatever you want. (laughs) Sorry, mom. (laughs) Hey, it didn't have a name on the headstock. It was a cheap, shitty bass. Yeah, yeah. Then I got out of the army, moved to Cedar City, Utah, so I could go to college. Basically, wanted to use that great free college that Uncle Sugar gave me. Yeah, I've, I've been in bands there ever since. I think I've got. 10 albums on Spotify right now with various different bands. Nice. Cool. I'm selling like crazy too. I think I've got like my third fifty dollar check in the last ten years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's incredibly lucrative. Yeah. Welcome to the music business. <laughs> yeah. So you want to be yeah, you wanted to be in show business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Say that again. I was I'm a retired sheriff's deputy as well. Oh wow. Okay. So you keep those guys in line or uh that's where, no. I met, that's where I met Dave. He's probably the worst one of them all. <laughs> I feel to ride a checkpoint. <laughs> hey, you don't you don't play an instrument, do you? That's the first question. Right. That's funny. Started hitting me. It was pretty, it was pretty rhythmic when he was trying to hit me. I thought, maybe this guy plays drum. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll tell you, it'd be a tough gig these days to to be a be a, a law enforcement officer. My wife told me the other day I should be a cop. I'm like, what are you talking about? 55 years old, what are you talking about? She wants to get you killed. Yeah, I'm like, you are definitely trying to kill me. Right? Some life insurance. Well, she recommends an insurance policy. It's a trap, man. Don't do it. Ah, yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. And uh, Hawkeye, uh, on guitars, what, what got you started down the road of, of all this? Very first thing that got me started is my sister and this other girl named Charlotte Bird. They used to do a little duet and both of them played guitar and sang. Yeah. They played stuff like Linda Rodstack, Carpenters and everything. And they were on the, the March of Dimes telephone, that telephone they used yeah. to have back then. Yeah. And I, I saw her, I saw my sister on TV and then, then they were on this talent music talent showcase up in Salt Lake city. And I was like, wow, I want to do that. So I had my sister teach me some chords and it went from me learning Linda Rodstack and Carpenters to, Next thing I know, I was playing Nazareth, and yeah, and I became a huge fan. Yeah. Who was your like, first concert? Then, of course, Eddie Van Halen came out. Then I was the big Eddie fan. Oh yeah, Randy Rose. Yeah. So Hawkeye. Who, went from there. who was your first concert? My first concert was Grateful Dead. Wow! Wow! wow. Get out of here! <laughs> really? Yeah. Get out of here! <laughs> Which uh, which, old, which era was that? Yeah, I was gonna say, how old were you? Um, I was probably about like fifteen years old. <laughs> As you should be going to your first dead show. Yeah. <laughs> what year were you born? Until that, and it was probably about like nineteen eighty. I think so. I saw. Okay. It. Okay. Well, that's yeah. That's, so we must be a, close to. I remember age. the audience was great. Yeah. It was great. The audience was a great show. There was a big cloud for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're trying to create their own rain. <laughs> my first show was 1979 Kiss Dynasty. And little... My first show was Kiss Crazy Nights in Las Vegas. Oh, was it really? That's a good one. Yeah. The first time someone tried to hand me a joint, it was the first time I saw a girl in a tight dress and no underwear on, too. <laughs> asked, How come there's no underwear lines? I thought, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only concert I've ever been to where somebody actually <laughs> handed me a joint was Pink Floyd. Oh, really? Yeah. The delicate sound of thunder. In '85, and it was Roy Clark. Oh, Roy, Roy Clark. Clark. Roy Clark is a good wow, one. that's strong. Yeah, uh, I, I remember Kiss coming out, and they were powerful for about three songs. And I'm tired. Oh yeah. Old guys. Yeah. <laughs> Give and, us a break, will you? And that was back then. Imagine now, right? Right. And, uh, but Anthrax opened up for him. I just remember watching Scott Ian run laps around the drum set. Like, what yep. is that guy? Doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. definitely definitely a, a power metal rock band. I did a cruise with them, and I, I was hanging with Scott in the in the uh, meeting room, 
and he couldn't get the Keurig to work, and he was getting all pissed off at it. At the coffee machine? <laughs> at the Keurig, yeah. I was like, that's when I took my, I was like, hey, dude, Relax. here's how you do that. Yeah. And then I took a selfie with him. Hey, here's your coffee. I'll take a picture. <laughs> He's awesome. probably used people handing him coffee. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a little high strung. He was nice though. And uh, Raven, yourself, how did you get? How did you find out that you could sing? First off, and and w- what was some of the early stuff that influenced you? Um, I couldn't sing. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I wanted to sing. I, I heard Jim Morrison. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was I was raised in a cult. Wow. So uh, I wasn't allowed to listen to things. and But when I snuck and got to hear Jim Morrison uh, sing and play, and I was like, wow. Uh, and then I, then, I, then I got this copy of this book, uh, you know, um, No One Gets Out of Here Alive. Yeah, I've heard of that one. Uh, I got a copy of that book, and I was sneaking it underneath my bed and reading it. And I was like, oh, my God, this is what I want to do. I want to be Jim Morrison. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I started trying to practice singing and, and – um, and, uh, yeah, I couldn't sing at all, uh, and eventually I, I made it into to chorus, and uh, still couldn't sing. Um, and uh, eventually, I found my voice, man, th- just through trial and error. I, I did my first gig when I was thirteen, fourteen years old. Couldn't sing at all, and uh, and eventually, just through through trial and error, I I, I figured it out. And and it wasn't until later in life I actually found my voice, right as opposed to sounding like everybody else. Now I have a really hard time sounding like anybody else. I have a hard time singing cover songs because I don't really sound like anybody but my but me. Right. So it, it's difficult for me to sing cover songs because now I've found my voice, you know? Right. Now, you you know I'm not going to let you just just glide over the I grew up in a cult <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that it was either going to be you or me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that is kind of a, um, a, a, a thing. When, when you say a cult, is there, was there a name of it or and what, what was it like? Uh, it was terrible. Yeah. Uh, it was really called the, the Bible students. Uh, it was sort of kind of like, uh, sort of kind of like Jehovah's Witnesses in a way. Yeah. Uh, but a little more hardcore, uh, sort of an off branch type thing. It was awful. It was awful. I, I actually wasn't allowed to go to school. I, wow. I didn't go to school really. Uh, I had to be homeschooled and, and I learned how to read and write by writing the Bible. Oh, wow. That's what I did. I had to write the Bible every year. So I learned how to to read and write by reading and writing the Bible. Yeah, uh, and that's how I did it. So, so you yeah, know that, the Bible? Yeah, you probably remember the Bible pretty good. Huh? Uh, yeah, I mean, do you yeah. know the Bible? Yeah, yeah. That's that's. Can uh, they hear me? Uh, yeah, should be. Yeah. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, yeah, I can hear okay. you. Did you ask? I didn't hear it that. Man, so you know, do you know the Bible? Yeah, I, I, you know, I. It's interesting, but when I turned eighteen, I kind of escaped i escaped um so i was doing music uh, uh, secretly uh, my mom would let me do music and martial arts so those were the only two things i was able to do wow. my grandparents were my grandfather was kind of like the head of the uh of the organization of the, the kind of the cult in my area yeah so we lived with him in a in a in a shack off his, off his uh side of the house or literally a, a steel metal shack uh, that was uh, originally a, a, a one car garage. We lived inside there. And um, so when I turned 18, I was able to it, extract myself as quickly as possible. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and, and later I became a, I became a Buddhist and martial arts had a lot to do with it. And, you know, I was able to escape from it, but it is, it, it, if you look, if you go to the, our YouTube channel, there's a little bunch of my old music on there. And a lot of my heavier stuff, it's really influenced by, that experience that I went through. I'm sure. Yeah. I, I mean, that's, that's a, interesting. that's a first, um, I've never heard a story like that. Yeah. And that's interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Cause it's, you know, it's an experience that, that not a lot of people have had. And it's interesting that they allowed you to do martial arts. Oh, they didn't. Oh. They didn't. My, my mother, uh, my mother, um, snuck me to the martial arts dojos. Uh, I, I got beat up on, in the in the playground when, uh, when I was a little little kid, and my mom decided that she was going to, without permission and secretly, start taking me to my my sensei, yeah. who started teaching me and things like that. And and I trained secretly 
uh, at the dojo without my without the 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 cult knowing about my grandparents knowing uh you know it was it was a it was a thing sort of deal i, I actually wrote a whole book about it i got a book out that's about that and stuff oh wow mm. what's the name of that the journey the journey from raven kane raven kane the journey okay. yeah um uh and it and is there is all contact cut off with the family at or did you figure maintain figure out how to maintain some relationship? Well, my my grandparents are dead now. Yeah. Um, my mom also escaped the the cult. Okay. My brother has escaped. My sister has escaped. Uh, my father, who's sort of a, a, estranged from me, although we have contact, um, you know, periodically, he sends me all kinds of because it was kind of like a Armageddon kind of cult type mm-hmm. thing, like mm-hmm. you know, the end of the world's come in yeah. so any day now. So. You know, all this stuff that's happening in the world today, my father is constantly sending me, oh, this is it. You're going to die. You got to you got to get into you got to get joined back up with us. Mm-hmm. And you know, otherwise you're going to not live. And you know, it's like a fear based type thing. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I feel sad for him. Yeah. Your mom is bad. She she comes out and spends like six months out of the year here. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Summer. Yeah. And. She's great. Yeah, yeah. So my question is for the people in those Armageddon cults, how long, like 30, 50, 60 years into this Armageddon shit's coming, all of a sudden it's still not coming. You're like, hey, maybe you're wrong. Yeah. Well, the thing is that um, God, uh, that um, God, is, his his day is, is like a, a thousand years. Yeah. You know? So, his, you know, a day in the life of God is like a thousand years. So. It says something like that in the Bible. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The concept of time to God is to, it's minuscule, right? Um, right. Well, it is. It's. I do see some of the stuff going on. Yeah. In the well, world these it's days, it's obviously and around you. And I'm everywhere. definitely going. Oh, that. You know. Oh, Japan just got rocked. Yeah. By, yeah. By tsunamis an earthquake. and earthquakes. And tsunamis, and you got Iceland. Uh, it's, it's a, got volcanic eruptions going nuts up there. And so, <clears throat> so the Southern Rock. Yeah. Sorry. I digress. Style of music. Yeah. With yeah. mixed with a little heavier, in my opinion. Yeah. I. I like it. Yeah, I think, I think we should listen to it. Yeah, too. let's take a look. At, we're going to listen to. Um, Sorry to change the subject. It's just we. No, just no I understand. Trying that. to, a little deep, trying a little to heavy. Get, yeah, get, <laughs> I want to get the train deep. back on the tracks. But that was interesting. Thank it was you, very man. interesting, and I'm going to read that book actually. Yeah, yeah. we'll check that out. Here. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. So, so bad boy. Is there anything that you want to uh, uh, to uh, set that up as we get ready to listen to it? Uh, bad boy sort of tells a story. Like kind of a, a funny little thing. Um, when I was when I was writing the lyrics for this, uh, I wanted to keep it kind of light. You know what I mean? Because um, yeah. a lot of the stuff that I write is really sort of, you know, kind of kind of on the deeper side. Uh, and I wanted to make this album, my lyrics of this album, pretty light. So I kind of told a story of like um, uh, I, I I do a funny line in there. The band always makes fun of me when I do it, where I, where I talk about drinking whiskey by a gallon and and what's funny about that is i don't drink at all i don't i don't do drugs i'm i'm total totally straight edge i've been my whole life you know so that you know i I tell these little little fables in there that uh you know that are kind of the inside jokes inside of the whole thing you know yeah Yeah. it's better than the alternative trust me (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) yeah built in designated driver (laughs) that's awesome that's awesome (laughs) all right well let's check it out guys uh this is bad boy from uh six string revolver
Okay. <laughs> yep. So it's hard for me to listen to a song like that and not want to cuss. Yeah. That was fucking badass. Yeah. Okay. So it's crisp. Like you can hear every intricacy in that recording. It's yeah. badass. Especially vocally. The right? drum, the drum, the solid ass drum groove yep. and the rhythm section as a whole is just the bomb. The guitar solo is off the charts. The vocal's great. Everything about that song's yeah, perfect. It's, it's good, I don't even know what I, there's nothing to change on that one. Nothing. Thanks, bro. It's perfect. Yeah, that's it's a really killer good. song. Number one hit, the best possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that does that does that one go over uh, really well with for? It for has guys? to. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It does. It. It was a release. Um, when that 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 uh, is an album that came out on four or five Hollywood with the Universal Music Group as the uh, underliner, yeah. uh, you know, as the subsidiary, uh, and that was the first release off that album. And uh, it, it did pretty good. It Great song, good. yeah, yeah. Um, Thanks, man, I appreciate that. The harmonies. Uh, yeah. Is that you, Raven, doing the background vocals on that? Uh, yeah, do you, do you, I figured so. Yeah. yeah. Do you like um, singing with yourself? Does it come naturally for you, or do you have to work at that? I have to work at it. Yeah, I prefer somebody else doing it. Yeah, really. Yeah, I like the contrast in the vocal styles and think stuff. You know, I just I just prefer other people yeah. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah, that one rock. The production of it, you, oh, you it was fantastic. I liked that the vocals were sitting on, on top. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just was, talked about that earlier. That's it how was, it should be. Yeah, yeah. We we were listening to something a little bit earlier, and and we're like, man, the vocals be nice. It was just just different up a, band. Yeah, different bands. Just it couldn't be. <clears> up it was this, such a but, great song, but the vocals were just not quite up where they needed to be. Yeah, you don't want to be buried. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you guys recorded that yourselves. Um, no, um, that so that was done for the the record label. Um, Thanks, because that was my next question. Band, I was like, was "You did that in a Raven dojo?" King. Yeah, Keep yeah. The, the band was just called Raven Kane, uh, and uh, so it was a it was sort of a solo project that um, Dave was a part of with me. But um, the 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 um, uh, engineer on that his name is Tommy Harrison, and he is uh, the, the 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 producer engineer on that on that album, and uh, he is fantastic. He actually is the um he is the professor of music at jacksonville uh university yeah. got so close to you guys oh, wow. uh, yeah. so he he uh he, he runs a studio out there so it was done out in jacksonville it was mixed in jacksonville uh and, and um and actually the bass player that's on that is the the bass player for the band yellow card oh, oh okay i've heard of yeah is that a soccer soccer reference i'm assuming or no, um, that's a, um, apparently that's a that's a that's a band. They're like, <laughs> they're like skater music or something. I yeah, don't know I've heard them. Yeah. yeah, I've heard the name. Yeah, I've heard the name. That yeah, you're right. That that producer's got it figured out. That uh, I mean, yeah, he teaches it for for a living. That's what he does. He he teaches music production and um and, and engineering and things like that. He's 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 world class for sure. Yeah. Yeah, we Super were. Clean, we were also. I mean, we were also just saying a little while ago. It's like, man, there's so many talented people yeah. involved in in creating this thing that nobody's hearing. That nobody's hearing, or um, you know, they it just kind of get buried under Taylor Swift. Yeah. Like, so yep. to speak, you know, <laughs> not that. Well, that's, that's why we really thing. appreciate what you guys are doing. You're, you guys are helping getting original music out there, and and uh, you know that it's so appreciative. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the hope for sure. You know, if it wasn't for guys like you, you know, it, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't get the light of day, you know? Yeah. Well, we're, th- we're doing the same thing. And so, it, it, you know, it, it's so hard for us Please. to do our, you know, like concept prog rock uh, opus <laughs> type of music. Um, because we're going up against so many tribute bands and that kind of thing. Is, is that the case in, uh, in Utah? Is everything, cover bands and, and tribute bands well yeah uh, there's so many tribute bands so many cover bands uh there's not a lot of tribute bands here they bring them in though yeah. Yeah. they bring them in they bust them in a lot, of bands go- a, lot. <laughs> a, lot of that, a lot of that going on now yeah <laughs> well I, we're trying to do something a little bit different with this band because uh, we're really only trying to play locally no more than five times a year yeah uh you know, because there's so many bands that saturate the market with themselves. They'll come out and they got a, all their friends and family and and, and uh, fans are there. And then the second time, maybe so. And the third time is going down. The fourth time is going down. Then 
then pretty soon they're, they've been playing for six months to a year and they're not getting the crowds anymore. And, yeah. and now it becomes like a job, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and we don't want to do that. We, we want, we, not only do we want to play mostly original music, but we want every single show to be an event. Yeah. So we're using a, a lot of um, promotion on every show. Every show is super important and we're trying to make every show uh, as big as possible. And that way we're having a good time. We're enjoying ourselves. It doesn't feel like a job. Yeah. And, uh, and, and there's a crowd there. So instead of being a bar band, uh, we're, 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 we want to separate that totally. I, in fact, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather my, myself create a concert uh, and, and, you know, rent a venue and, and do yeah. a, a concert yeah. as opposed to playing some kind of bar game. We've talked about that yeah. so many times. Yeah. <clears throat> are there places there that are available for you guys to do that? Yeah. And I'm, I'm surprised other bands don't actually do that, yeah. but uh, you know, the, the, the four of us are, are mostly businessmen here. Yeah. You know, I run a business, Dave, Dave runs a business. Hawkeye has his own business. Chuck is, well, we won't talk about Chuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he can't hear you anyway. Don't worry. Well, you can't hear me. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. The so you look at it kind of like from a business perspective, but it's still having a good time, you know, yeah. having fun. Yeah. If we think of it like businessmen and approach it that way, uh, that we can make something at least locally, you know, uh, something big and fun and enjoyable for us all to do yeah. instead of feeling like, oh, we got to play 20 cover songs, we got to be up there three hours. And, right. you know, that's not fun. We're too old for that. Yeah. 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 Well, we've we're, we're, done the thing. I don't, I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. We've all done it. Well, it, we're both, <laughs> both of us are in multiple bands. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so we try to kind of sometimes those bands under the same umbrella and do a show which we're actually getting ready to do on the 13th yeah um oh. another band that i'm in is getting ready to go to florida to open for lita ford but we're getting ready to oh, do this, nice. this 13th show which is really cool because uh the bands are amazing all all three yeah, bands all are three just bands. amazing yeah. and it's going to be a ton of musicians under one roof you know it, whether it's all musicians watching us play or not it still doesn't matter it's it was trying to get you know get seen and get heard yeah but i agree right. i agree though that you can oversaturate yourself um it, i think that it's a it's a hard balance of um you know okay you got your original band you're gonna go hit this bar hit this bar hit this bar and you're gonna do six shows in in two months um and like mm -hmm. you said there's only so many friends and family that that can and uh more importantly will will, will come out yeah um but at the same time i struggle with you know, if you're out there and you're in, and you're playing and there, I almost don't want my friends and family to come out. I want new people to see it and, and go, okay, that's cool. Or yeah. that sucks, whatever they say, but at least you're, you're being seen by new eyes. Yeah. Right. So that's I, I, when I first come back to America from my first deployment was to uh, Germany I came back. Actually, I went over there to pick up my wife. I ordered her and I brought her back with me. <laughs> Atta boy. <laughs> Fair enough. When I came back, I was in Fort Lewis, Washington, right outside of Tacoma. And that was right after the big grunge thing happened. Yeah. And you could go to this place called the Red Roof Inn. And every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, five hours, four bands. Every band played one set of original material. That was the best fucking wow. music. At the Red Roof Inn. Inn. The hotel? No, it was a it was a bar. Oh, oh okay. Well, some chains had played there. A whole bunch of crazy really fans. sure. The Tacoma's, you know, yeah, forty minutes from Seattle, depending on how drunk you are and if you get lost. You know? <laughs> yeah, those that, that's the way it is in uh, the 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 Virginia Beach area. That's where I kind of cut my teeth was in the Virginia Beach area. Yeah, yeah. and it was local music, uh, and and it was original music. So yeah. the biggest band in the area was all original music right uh no 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 covers zero covers and they would pack the place all the time wow. yeah with, with original music yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's you got to go well you yeah. know you have a a venue that's bought in to that kind of a format that allows the cream of the crop original band to kind of become the headliner and draw the most people and then you know the bands below them get seen by those people but it, well right it, it's nice to have a venue that'll pull you in locally, like, you know, Ray's band, Hope's Anchor is open for Striper a couple of times. Yeah. Um, and big names like that. So if you can get in with a, a place like that, 
in your town that'll let you jump onto a big show like that. Yeah. It seems to be the way to kind of catapult your name out there anyway. I, right. I, That's exactly right. That's exactly what we're doing. Our, our first show was, was, um, uh, opening up for, um, uh, saving uh, able. Save and able. Oh, nice. And yeah. then we have, well, we have our video shoot. That's just us. But, um, then our next show, our third show is going to be opening up for saliva. So nice. that's, that's exactly the idea. We, we so we, we gathered the, 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 the most, uh, well, that's a the good best one. musicians in the area, at least I think. And, you know, because of that, the reputation of all of, all of these guys behind me, which I'm so blessed to play with, it's really created locally here. It's really created a buzz for us that people want to see what we're, we're all collectively going to, going to bring to the table. And so that, you know, without even hearing us they're like, Hey, why don't you jump on this live show? Hey, why don't you jump on the, uh, on the saving able show? You know, yeah. uh, so, so how are you doing that? Do you have a, a, do you have a manager or agent? You're doing it yourself? No. <laughs> Uh, I know some agents. He knows some agents. He knows some agents. He used to run a bar in Cedar too. So, well, so how did know, you how did you land the saliva show? The saliva show. That, that's all this guy right here. Yeah, nice. Yeah. That's that's awesome. We're, like I said, we're all businessmen. So we we, we if you approach it in that way, uh, it, it really makes a difference. You know, I, I remember back in the the early '90s, I took this course by a guy named uh, Nichols. Uh, I think his name was Richard Nichols. He had this music business course that you get on cassette tape. Oh yeah. And I, and I took this course and he used to manage Aerosmith, right? That was his big thing. And it was, it was pretty expensive and I saved my money and I got this music business course and I, and I took it like it was the gospel man. Yeah. And I started, and I started really looking into music business and how to promote back in those days and how to do these things. So because I took that course, I started thinking of bands like a, like a business and how I can market it and how I could stand out and how I could make us different and all of these things. And I started applying that and it, it worked and it worked and it has worked for almost every single band I've ever been in be, yeah. because of approaching it from that, from that perspective. Yeah. yeah. Are you big on merch? Are you guys doing merch? Uh, mm -hmm. What are some of the things that, that seem to have worked for you? Um, with this band, we we just started with T-shirts, but yep. in the past, I've done everything from beard oil to you know, oh, wow. <laughs> I mean everything yeah. <laughs> that I could put my face and name on. I, I've done. Yeah, you're not making money releasing music hardly anymore. It's pretty hard, right? Women's G strings works good. I tell you, women's yeah. G strings. Yeah. Yeah. With the right. band name, right? with, with the band name. What do you yeah. get for a pair and of G strings? Yeah. Poetry book too, man. Because Henry Rollins. With Black Flag, man, I, I learned a lot from Henry Rollins and Black Flag and those bands because those guys were do it yourself from right. from the day one, from get go. Right. Uh, you know, Henry Rollins was was going to Kinkos and stuff, copying, making photocopies of his poetry books and selling that stuff. And I, I still have one of those old books that I uh, poetry books I used to sell at shows and stuff that you know I would just go to the cop the copy store and so I, anything and everything that I could put my uh, you know our band logo on or name on, I, you know I. You know, I've definitely done before, and I'm sure these guys have too. Yeah. Well, I have a band called Bottle Monkey that released four or five CDs, and we sold we sold 15 shirts for every CD we sold, and we sold a lot of CDs, but we sold a hell of a lot of T-shirts. Yeah, the shirts, lot. the shirts go well. Let me ask you about that because um, it it depends on what type of gig you're on. Um, so if you're on a bill with several bands, there is the dreaded breakdown immediately after your set and and then boom another band comes on and is that when you go to the merch table or uh you know when we did the striper show it was it was a bit easier because we 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 did our set and then we were able to go out to the lobby that was closed off you could actually talk to people and and you know there were there were roadies taking our gear off mm -hmm. the, the whole taking the gear off after your set and making sure you got all your cables and 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 Hawkeye's G strings and stuff like that, um, <laughs> you know, making sure you have all that stuff off. It, it's it. I don't know. I can't find time to get to the to the merch booth and be able to talk to people. You have to be able to talk to them. You have it's to designate like, one of the guys that, in the band yeah, to do that, cause... or have somebody <clears throat> doing it for you. But it's not the same as if the band goes to the merch table and it's a meet yeah, and greet at right. that point, right? Yep. So, we figure since Raven doesn't play an instrument, he can go run the merch booth while we clean up our <laughs> shit. 
<laughs> lead singer yeah, disease, being, right? Being a local singer that actually helps with gear. I, yeah. I really do. <laughs> yeah, you seem like you do. You seem like you're you're the guy that uh, you're there first, and uh, no. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> saying no back there. No. <laughs> <laughs> he my <laughs> and that thing's heavy, man. <laughs> I know. I know. It's important too. Uh, do it you is, bring your own mic? Heavy. That's actually a good point. Uh, do you? No, break... you know what, uh, what, what, uh, what I I'm blessed with, and and I and I know these guys are blessed with too. Um, is you know I have a very very supportive uh, uh, wife. Yep. who's been with me for a long time now and is kind of used to the the music thing with me. And so she will jump in and, and uh, take down gear. She'll jump in and, and run the merchandise booth. And actually, that's normally what happens is she'll end up running the merchandise booth or do other things like that and, and pretty much do whatever needs to be done. She, and, and, you know, I, that's been uh, essential in my journey through the music in the past 20 plus years is, uh, is is having her a part of that to, yeah. to help with all of those things you're talking about. Yeah, teammate. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That understands, that buys into it. Yeah, yeah. that's for sure. Hawkeye, we got to talk to you, buddy. Where, where are you from, and uh, what? What? Why are you so quiet, man? What the fuck's your deal, man? I'm a quiet person. <laughs> <laughs> Vegas, Nevada. Oh, you're from Vegas. I lived in Vegas. I, was born in Vegas. I actually we moved up here when I was young southern utah yeah and i went to high school and everything up here then i split and went back down there for a while and i came back here then i then i ended up in a band and toured around everywhere so ended up back in vegas again eventually and stayed there i was in the in the vegas music scene for about probably 10 years wow and what's the vegas what's... When the economy collapsed uh, what's I the back up here again? What's the Vegas music scene like for for you know original music and, and vamped? Art? Yeah, you got vamps, vamped, vamped, vamped. Um, it's not really not that great for. I was playing in two bands down there, mm-hmm. and it finally came. One was an original band, one was a cover band, and the cover band was making money. Original band wasn't. Yeah, I mean, so. If I think I got so busy that I just had to make a choice, and I, I actually stuck with the cover band, even though I enjoyed the original band more. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's definitely more fun writing the stuff than it is regurgitating regurgitating it. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, Corey Bam doesn't pay very much. No. Yeah. How does it typically work at the venues uh, that you guys are doing? Is it are they doing a cover? Do you get part of the door? Do you get uh, uh, um, a we got paid. What we got paid? Um, uh, we didn't even get paid a hamburger and fries. We ended up having to. No, pay. they tried to. They they tried to collect. Yeah, yeah. We didn't <laughs> tried get, being the. We keyword. didn't even get paid food that one gig, and we did. And he's like, "Never again." Um, most most bars around here, you get the door basically. But when we open up for a, a bigger band, there'll be a set amount you get paid. Basically. Yeah. yeah. What we decided to do um, is. Um, put a, a, a minimum value on what, what we're, what we're doing. So we, we have a, we have a thousand dollar minimum Yeah, and that's for two hours of, of original music. So it, it, and, and if they say no, we're okay with that. Right. Um, because uh, we're only going to play a few shows anyway. So they, they have, it has to be something really worth uh, dragging, you know, four old men out the, the yeah. door. Uh, it has to be something fun and enjoyable and something we're really going to, you know, like doing. And uh, so we figure, um, you know, with with the experience that we have in the in the uh, uh, in the the show that we bring is it's very um, dynamic and very energetic kind of show. Yeah. Um, then we need at least a thousand dollars to make it happen. To move. Um, and if, yeah, if they don't if they don't agree with that. That's OK. And it's you know, we're not for everybody, but we are for some. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, and that's actually a good uh, thing to do is to do a set price. You know what? We should do that as well. You uh, saw what I sent you today, didn't you? Uh, I don't know. Did I? Oh, you have to look. I got your messenger. I'll look. I'll look uh, been, I've been, I've been, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, the whole thing is that you're a man is worthy of his pay. And a band is worthy of their pay. Yeah. And <clears throat> don't be afraid to raise your price. Or have if a, they say no, have say price. okay. Yeah, have a price. Right. I mean, the reality no, is we're not campaigning over the last 20 years hasn't changed that much. That's a problem. Yeah. 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 
I, I don't plan on being in any band that's any bar's owner's bitch. You know what I mean? That yeah. that's, that controls where I play. It's not. Right. You know, take a exactly. flying, you know what? You know what I mean? I, I got a good buddy who owns the Blackbird Bar up in Senior City. That's where we're playing with saliva. And yeah, we, we don't want to do four hour bar, bar games, basically. So that kind of limits your opportunities to play there, essentially. Mm -hmm. Right. And, that, and that's what I say create your own gigs, man. Create your own, uh, yeah. rent out a place. You take all the risk, yep. but you also get all the reward and you have ultimate control of what's going on. I would rather bring in a band like Striper. And us four businessmen go, okay, here's a business venture. We're going to bring in Striper for, say, they charge this amount of money. That means we need this amount of tickets. So we need to sell this amount. Let's pull all, everything together, create an event. Our band opens up for them. Yeah. And then then we reap all the benefits after yeah. we, pay, we take the risk. You yeah. know, it's, it's that to me, that makes a much more sound. Uh, uh, plan than going. Oh, let's let's open for 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 uh, Jimmy's Chicken Shack for for fifty Ooh. bucks a piece, and nobody's there, and yeah. we have to play on the floor, and we, you know uh, that doesn't make sense to me. I, I want I, I want to have fun and enjoy it, but but still get something out of it I too. Agree. You know? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> and then there's like, we're that, not doing it for money. To be honest. No, yeah. we're not doing it. For well, money. Yeah. yeah, you kind of are. Yeah, I mean, we all kind of are. I mean, I, I say the same thing, and I agree with you 100% with everything you just said, but there's something to be said to maybe buy on to a show, that if it's a big show in front of a lot of people, because you never know who's going to see it. Exactly. Uh, so, there, you know, lightning could strike. You don't know. It's a gamble. It's a crapshoot. But like you said. It could be one of them. Exposure can definitely be another one. Women could be another one. We're all hey, married. you know, whatever, whatever makes your monkey jump, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was back in the eighties. That was back in the eighties. Yeah. 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 I got caught, got caught in the time warp. <laughs> yeah, he's not picking up on the. Yeah, well, it, when it comes down to to you know either buying on to opening up for a larger act or any of that kind of thing, at that point you're going to accept probably less uh, uh, guaranteed money. But you better have your shirts and your merchandise yeah. and and be out there. That's where you capitalize. Yeah on those type of shows and somebody might see you and, and, and have you booked for another a thing. Let's talk about merch uh, as far as uh, music. Are you guys still doing CDs? Uh, what do you, what do you, what's the, um, what's the format of, of music? How are you giving, are you still doing cassettes? Uh, eight track. What, 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 are we, what, what are we doing there? We just sold our last eight track. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're still using eight track down here. That's poor shit, man. That's all I hear. That's all I right? <laughs> it's coming back. Remember how it faded out yeah. and then faded back in? <laughs> it's coming back, eight track. <laughs> I don't think we've actually uh talked we're we're still talking about that because we have a new song coming out and and I, I think it's pretty neat what the what uh some of the new kids are doing these days with uh music videos and Spotify and the social media and and all like that and we're we're kind of ex experimenting with with uh some of the ideas like uh what uh say tom mcdonald uh is doing uh and how he's getting his music out i i, I think that's i think that's the new way man instead of going out and playing bars a bunch of times yeah. invest the money in making a music video and make something mm -hmm. really good and dynamic and invest the time to they put it out in the social media world and get some buzz going on and and create that then you got people seeing your music that way yeah. the concept is maybe release multiple singles eventually once you've released a couple singles then maybe you can put out a physical copy of the cd yeah well because I, I i mean on physical copy you're making 10 bucks you could get ten thousand streams and you ain't making 10 bucks no yeah, you right. can get a million streams you're not making 10 bucks <laughs> um yeah. but uh you know we keep going back and forth on we're releasing stuff we're putting our whole catalog on usb sticks and and, oh. and things like that um ah, you know because idea. there's not even a, a cd player in, in a modern car so you know there's a lot of people that still like a cd but you we might have to adjust how we're we're giving that uh, data out there now yeah that's a good idea usb stick yeah I, i've always wanted to put out an actual physical vinyl record me you know? too yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks fancy yeah. Thinking, yeah. I don't know what you want to do. You want to do? The, the, uh, problem, you know? the problem with vinyl yeah, is, I've looked into. Let's say you master your album, 
you have to master it again the separate way for vinyl. Yeah. Because the, the bass and song is incredibly different on a vinyl record. I had no idea. Yeah. Apparently it is um it is a a bit of a different thing. I, I think I saw it was does this sound right? A thousand dollars for for a hundred records? Yeah, that sounds about, about right. Yeah. yeah. So you have to sell that record for twenty bucks um to be in the game, right? With with yeah. with margins. Talking business. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's not a good margin, really. No, no, no. You can make a better margin on uh, a thumb drive. Yeah, I think my thumb drives were the highest margin. Uh, return. <laughs> that's kind of the. It seems to be what people are doing more so than vinyl, unless you're on a different level. Yeah, if you're on a higher level. I, I think the next level is where you start selling vinyl and making money on it because that's really vinyl is really popular right now. Yeah, mm. buy vinyl. I, I buy too. a lot of vinyl. Yeah, I do too. Bye bye. <clears throat> well. You know. Yeah, it's it's a it's a tricky path to uh, to kind of work through. Going okay, well, we've got to kind of morph. Not only do you have to write the music, record the music, shoot the video, figure out what merch you're gonna do, book the gigs, but now we have to morph and go. Okay, well, things are changing. Maybe we have to adjust and go with. Yep. You know what's the next thing? Uh, <clears throat> airdrops, free airdrops. Uh, well, if you come to our cool. show, you know. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. If That's that what is, I've heard. That it is. So they say. That it is. Right. Um, I think that, I think we're all all here at, uh, in in our band. It's like you know, it's it's about having fun, about enjoying ourselves. Yeah. Now, like, we all have our own businesses and stuff. And yeah. when it came to the 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 the, the money and, and stuff like that, and being uh, concerned about charging the extra prices, and in my business, I I learned that <clears throat> with. Um, if I charge a lower price, people take it less seriously. But yeah. the minute I gave, I say, you know, hey, we're, you know, we're two hundred dollars a month, and they're like, oh, that's expensive. Like, yeah, I know it's an investment, but you know, this is, you know, and I tell, explain all the reasons why we're worth it. Yeah. So with with this, it's like uh, I, we want to bring the best show that we possibly can while we're having a really good time doing it with the the, the highest quality music that we possibly can. Yeah. So when we say, Hey, we're, you know, we're a thousand dollars minimum, man. And when they get it, we, we like, we, we, you know, we, uh, we uh, not only live up to the expectation, but we, we outdo the expectation, yeah. you know? Well, and the other thing they don't understand is, okay, you can pay us nothing and we'll show up with, um, some 1982 uh, uh, incandescent colored disco <laughs> type garbage lights. Karaoke lights. Yeah, karaoke lights. Or like you said, if we can we can put on a show if we have, you know, the ability to to do production. I mean, if, if you see this room here, this is what we bring on the, out for production. We've got yeah, screens nice. and we've got lights and we you know we have eight, we have eight awesome. TVs on stage with us yeah. for the Giza show. Yeah. It, that's awesome and you know uh it all costs money and if you don't self-fund it you know i i question myself every time that we're doing i do set up i question you all the time <laughs> as we're doing set up and i'm going <laughs> hey i need six more hdmi cables and i'm like oh man what am i doing you should see him i have to smack him before every show during setup <laughs> yeah. i have to smack him out of it dude yeah. we're good I get, I get a little uh, amped up when it comes to making sure I have every cable in duplicate. So if there's a problem, we still got it. But it works out, and it always yeah. works out. There's never failure. They have group therapy for that. I <laughs> yeah, we need a musician's <laughs> group therapy. That might be what this whole podcast is, yeah. just group therapy. Group um, therapy, yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing, I, I've been recommended for I'm not doing it either. <laughs> well, speaking of group therapy, let's uh, let's listen yeah. to My let's Addiction. Let's another one out. Yeah, let's t check out My Addiction. Is uh, you want to do a setup on this or talk about it after? You just did, and that was pretty good. That was a pretty good setup. Let's do, <laughs> let's, let's, let's play My Addiction. We'll see you on the other side.
tears in my eyes Cause I can't sleep at night Without you by my side You had it Gonna be gone so long Baby, what am I gonna do Without you Baby, I have a secret Something I'll never share things on that track is uh, I'm hearing Hammond and I'm hearing piano 
and I'm hearing acoustic guitar. So I'm I'm starting to hear some different elements in in the the, the songwriting process. Uh, another great song is that how many ballads? We we had an argument with uh, my other band. It was like we have four ballads. That was us, actually. Yeah. Well, uh, it wasn't an argument well, exactly. That, well, yeah, we had a conversation. That's too many ballads. Once you woke up, <laughs> yeah, you came to your senses. Um, <laughs> no. How many ballads do you guys do in a night? You have to do a few, right? We do all ballads and bad boys. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we have just a couple, though. Yeah, just, just uh, that one. There's that one, and we have we do another one called uh, Cherokee. Well, that's not really a ballad. It's balladish. We have another one called Dead Hand. It's an original or newer one. And it's not, I think that's really the only ballad, ballad. That one? Yeah. That one screams. But there has been, there, there was a night that we had that audience going, and the ballad was coming up, one of them, and we shut it down and didn't play it. Oh, it wasn't that, that one, was it? Bring the energy level down. Yeah. That yeah. one, that, that's called reading the room, though. That, yeah. That's yeah, a good yeah. thing. That one for me. All sides standing around bonfires, but yeah, <laughs> reading the bonfire. Yeah, yeah. That one's got a really pretty pre-chorus, and then the chorus when you come. Oh my god, I got goosebumps. Yeah, that that gong. gong. It just went huge, and I was like, yeah, I was digging the pre-chorus, and then all of a sudden, bam! <laughs> He's yeah. like, hey, your mic's on. Stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I had to tell him, hey, dude, I don't mute your mic. I mute your mic. I'm over here jumping up and down. Going, it's <laughs> fucking like, great. <laughs> Uh, that's really cool guys um i still say there's a ronnie van zant in there yeah yeah totally there's definitely a ronnie yeah. van zant in there i would agree with that so raven actually plays guitar on some songs that is one of the ones he plays on okay mm -hmm. acoustic you bring out the acoustic for that uh yes yeah yeah that's a that good my, man my first gig with him was during trail hero and we're opening up for saving able so I played with Raven one other time a long time ago. We just kind of threw a one hour gig together just for a benefit. And I had never even met him. We just did an hour gig and never even talked to each other. But uh, Trail Hero was the first one. And so he used a little amp to the acoustic, you know, so this makes it easier for the sound guy. Yeah. And he has so much energy. He's just pulling the fucking guitar. And he, he, this is before he had a wireless. So he's literally pulling, I'm standing on stage <laughs> holding the amp with my leg during the set because he's going to pull it off the. The stand. <laughs> Unplug yeah. it. Yeah. You can't go on the catwalk. The yeah. cord won't go on the park. Yeah. Well, he's like All a. He's I'm like, like Dave, who's used to dealing with a short cord. Yeah. He's not. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, uh, you guys ever heard? You guys ever heard the story of Ronnie Van Zant when they opened for uh, the Stones? Uh. -uh. Okay. No. So uh, Leonard Skinner was uh, opening for the Stones, and they had one rule just one rule don't walk all the way out to the catwalk onto a giant uh rolling stones tongue they said don't go on the tongue don't go on the tongue <laughs> so as soon as Freebird goes into those just you know the climactic guitar solos they all go out on the tongue and they're just like yeah <laughs> screw you stones here we go and it blew the crowd away you know i mean that's you know sometimes you have yep. to lift the leg and, and pee on the high <clears throat> jericho did that yeah I was out with Fozzie and uh, Jericho did the same thing on a, like in a massive crowd and he didn't get into trouble, but he was told not to do it. He did. He was like, I'm Chris Jericho. I'm going to run out on that catwalk yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sometimes when they give you a rule like that, it's almost your obligation to do it you as a rock and roll. What they're really saying is I dare you to go across that right. line. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's what I heard too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that's that's awesome. Guys. That's a great song. That is a great song. Great song. Um, uh, you know, I I like a good ballad. I do too. I call them breathers. Uh, I I think I heard somebody uh, say a little while ago, you you guys can do two hours of original music. That's uh, well, if we played all the original songs. We could do many more hours than that. But uh, we we're trying to do pretty much originals. You know, we we have a few cover songs that we add in uh, here and there. Because really what we want to do is take those old songs that we had from the, the past, kind of replace them with our new new material as we're, you know, yeah. merging to this new band and this new sound that we're, we're kind of coming up with together. You know, I, we don't want to make it all dominant in, in one particular songwriter. Uh, we, we all want to have our input into it. And yeah. uh, so this is a, definitely a new era of, of uh, how we're writing songs and everything else. And, and in the past, I would just bring songs in and, and, and uh, the guys, guys would learn the songs. And now we're now 
we really want to collaborate with each other, yeah. write together. And actually, I'm 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 doing my best not to write music and just write lyrics, and because so I really want everybody to have an input, so that we have our own unique sound. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the best way to do it. Is is everybody's involved in the process of of uh, you know creating uh, like you know everybody has to be an equal input for it to be uh, a longevity band. So everybody yeah. feels like they're a part of the thing, you know, and uh, but, and and that's going to be key uh, all the way through. That was me. Sorry. Oh, okay. um, yeah, and that's that's really Dave. Um, Dave here <clears throat> um, brought that to, to 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 my attention. He was like, "Hey, man, let you know, uh, we've got some great players in here. It, it's it's more than just just you. You know, we have we have all these guys that are talented too. And and they're like, yeah, you know what? You're you're right, man. I, I uh, this this needs to be a band where we're all we're all saying that that's that's why um you know like we don't have a band leader man we're we're all we're all the band leader we're all we're all we all have equal say and that's and, good and, and that's what he should be and and you know I'm I'm really enjoying it. Chuck says he, he's in charge but we just let him believe that <laughs> yeah Chuck so, <laughs> if you don't if you don't have a band if you're not in a band where there's camaraderie like that it isn't gonna last yeah I don't think I yeah. just yeah you know. You, you trust each other. You 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 form a brotherhood. Yeah. You get comfortable musically. You know where the other one's going to go. Uh, you can read each other while you're playing. That's important. Yeah. Um, since Ray and I, you know, we've been playing together for 17 years, but not the full 17 years. But yeah. we, since we've gotten together in the last few years, uh, we've gotten way tighter. You know, with our bass player Michael, he's you know him and I have gotten way more solid you don't even have to look at each other anymore yeah and it's funny uh, even if you put it down for a minute like we we didn't play for a month and we we got together the other day and played our entire hour and a half set and i i was like uh, okay so that i thought we played our 45 minute set yeah he was like we're done already it it was just (laughs) it was just like in a zone you know and ray starts and it's like all right we'll see you on the other side and we just played every song from beginning to end and it was like yeah. That's the well, best we've ever done it. We should have recorded it. Yeah, no doubt. Say that again, uh, Chuck. Do you covers or no? no? No. Well, we do. Well, one. we do one. We do one at the very end. We play "Cashmere" by Zeppelin, yeah. and we have a guest singer come up because we're nice. a trio. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a it's a prog rock trio with no vocals. It's just there's it's videos rough. going on with every song. Yeah. Oh um, wow. Yeah. Oh wow. <clears throat> and but, we've got a guy that you think original music's challenging. Do instrumental. Yeah. yeah yeah try to get that booked boys right it's a bitch to book but <laughs> we, we bring up different singers yeah. you know that are very well known that'll sit in with us yeah. um and All you right. know it may help it may not i don't know but yeah. it goes over every time I, i've gotten to the point where i don't i don't care i'm i'm with raven um four shows a year i'm i'm not I disagree a but little they're bit. They're going to be for. I want to play the. I want to play that show a little bit more because I think it deserves to be out there. The ninety. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, but four four shows, like if we can get four proper shows, um, and and even that's you know, not many shows a year. No, I know. Gab, you have moved these. I'm TVs thinking before? once a month. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I can move a TV. Yeah. Okay. I, I you book it. I mean, I'm there. Well, I'm not saying, hey, look, I'm not trying to give an argument. I'm just no. saying I would like to see it out more. That's all. No, me too. I, uh, I, well, the way you get it out more is, is you start using, utilizing this new technology that, 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 that the kids have these days. They have the social media. You, you start broadcasting things from your, your band room. You start broadcasting things about your band members. You start sharing the writing process like hey i I just wrote this riff and then you start putting the riffs together into things and you get people's opinions on the songs and and you start doing music videos and you get interactive with your audience so they're very much engaged so they have an emotional connection to what you're doing yeah Uh, that's how you kind of get it out that then when you have your show it's like oh shoot they're playing Uh, because you know i I, I get this analogy man it's like I love ACDC, bro, but if ACDC was playing four times a month in my local area, I'd just see him the first couple of times, but after that, I'm like, eh, I might yeah. see him later another that's time. That's a great point. You know? That's a great point. Yeah. And that's, that's <clears throat> the, our area is particularly oversaturated with tribute bands. Mm. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Uh, um, 
they 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 make a lot of money. Yeah. The problem is, is that they're, it's exactly that they play once a month at the same place, and it's just kind of it gets old. But people still go. No, they go, man. <laughs> it's that's it. I people mean, still go. I don't. You know. They go. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I, I'm kind of on the fence on that one. Well, yeah. well, like I said, it, it create an emotional connection with your audience per per your song. You know, you know like if your one of your songs is is about something in particular, for example, you you might say, "Hey, you know, if you are experiencing this, that, or the other, whatever you wrote the song about, you know, we wrote this song for you, you know, and then and put that out like right there, so they 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 get this connection with with you and what you're doing." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I agree. And yeah. your songs seem to have that. Your songs have so much feel to them that it'd be easy, I think, for people to feel a connection to them. Because I guarantee I'm going to listen to both the songs that we've already played mm-hmm. again. Uh, I like them that man. much. You yeah. know what I mean? And there's I, not to put any other bands down or that we've had on or or even that I've gone to see to support where I didn't necessarily care for the music that much. Cause I, I still want them to succeed as well. Yeah. I, yeah. I really get jazzed when I hear music, like what you guys are putting out, like that ballad to me. Yeah. It's a great. Ballad. I love ballads that are that good. Yeah. That one smokes. Yeah. And, and the song before it uh, as well. I mean, it's just good stuff, man. It needs to be heard. Yeah. It needs to be heard. And, the third song, the last song that we'll do, um, are we going to do the, the Son of the South song? Is that something new with everybody in this band's lineup? Yeah, it's not new. Um, it, it's got a great story behind it, um, but, you know, it's not necessarily new. Okay, give me the so- story of that. Well, when when uh, Dave and I uh, started playing that, that song, um, I, I was getting denied. We were getting denied playing places because they heard that that song was actually on the radio for a little while. Um, it was the first, first one of the first releases from the first album that we did, uh, and uh, with Universal, and <clears throat> people heard it and they thought that it was about being, uh, you know, a racist. They thought it was. I don't know why the the, the term Southern has anything to do, or South has anything yeah. to do with being racist, but it's for a, some it's, reason it's yeah. a sign of the times, yeah. brother. Yeah, well. Our university was called Dixie State, oh, and wow. and there was Shame a whole bunch them. of protests, and they mm-hmm. wanted the university to change its name because they felt like it was a, a, a it's racist. It's been offending people. Right, yeah, yeah, right. And so, like, the whole Son of the South thing, um, you know, we kind of took personal because they're trying to change everything about what is happening in our local community. Uh, all my kids still go to Dixie high. Yeah. And You're racist. I know. Right? <laughs> Immediately. Bunch and of skinheads. It, yeah. And, and, and that, that's not what it's about at all. Yeah. You know, in fact, um, we have a, uh, a boxing program out here and uh, it, uh, it one time was called rebel boxing. And they, it, it made such a, uh, it made people so angry because it was called rebel boxing that they were forced, they weren't allowed to compete uh, it, because it mm-hmm. said rebel boxing. They had to change their name in order to be allowed into competition. That, that, so that's, the, that's the, the conflict that was going on at the time. So when, uh, so when we did uh, Son of the South, what it's really about is, you know, we have people fly, uh, we have People flying uh, airplanes into our, our tall buildings, um, terrorists cutting the heads off of our soldiers at that time, mm-hmm. and all of these terrible things that were happening. And they all had one thing in common. They all said that America was the great Satan. And the way I looked at it lyrically is, uh, it, you know, if America is the great Satan, then that it, it's obvious to me that everyone in America um, lives south of heaven. Right. So if we live south of heaven, then I don't know about you guys, but I'm really, really proud to be a son of the South. Yeah. And I think uh, any any American would probably, if they understood that story, would probably feel the same way. Yeah. Any patriot. Yeah. They lose the fact that America has been the world's police for the last hundred years. Yep. I mean, if we were Satan, we wouldn't would be out helping everybody. Yeah, he would know. Yeah. He would know. <laughs> 
Yeah. So that's what it's about, man. It's it's not about being from the South, although I'm I'm from the South. Mm-hmm. It, it's about we are apparently the great Satan in the world, and if we are, then good. Yeah, well, I'm a glad proud to be a son of the South. All right. All right, well, check it out. Here we go. Son of the South. Six string revolver. Here we go. See why you should be getting in trouble for that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, God, that was good. I think that you know, if that concept and that idea came to you in 2001 or back in the day, it seems like it's re returning, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, that mm-hmm. we have got to be on the lookout for airplanes again. Yeah, unfortunately, right. yeah, you're right. But you keep saying that on the music on the music end of that on the music. Oh, sorry about that. That sounded a little Molly Hatchet ish. Yeah, definitely Molly <laughs> Molly Hatchet. And we're, I'm trying to convince these guys we should re-record a really heavy version of it. Slow it down and know, grind man. it, or what would you? How would you change it up? I take out the organ. I like the organ. Don't get me wrong. I love the version, but yeah. I think just heavy guitar and bass. Maybe slow it down a little. Maybe. Yeah. Are you guys in yeah, like sta- balls and junkie? Yeah. Are you guys standard tuned or or how how do you guys do your tunings? Uh, we do some self and drop beat. Yeah. Okay. Some self and drop beat. We're, we're tuned down a half step. But... Yeah. Okay. So you're in E flat and then sometimes yeah. drop drop D from there. That's, that's yeah. That's where I live yeah. as well. 
It's somebody we're... reported that because of Ravens' age, we'll just start going down a half a step. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Next thing you... B, but... We've been yeah. brought being two years. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how you uh, you kind of go. It sounds better lower anyway, so who cares? It does. Yeah. Uh, that was another good one, man. Yeah, that was a good Golly, one. Golly, do you have a bad song? Yeah, not so far. <laughs> uh, Your answer. <laughs> so, uh, there, so, again, I hear keyboards again. and Oh, uh, it was dominant in that yeah, song, yeah. Yeah, it was dominant. How, in the left ear? Mine was left ear. Um do you how, what how are you going to do that live are you, you going to bring in a keyboard player or um what are you thinking on on that secondary uh, guitar player? well some of it too i'm ba- i'm the bass player so a lot of it i will use a, a pod with poly octave generator yeah so basically anytime he takes a solo because i'm typically the only other guy playing when he takes a solo right i basically the octave up i've got about 75 percent of my signal yeah and i'll sometimes I'll add a little gain at the same time to make it a little fuzzier yeah and you can almost you can almost get an organ e sound it's yeah. not as organ but we try not the future of the band we're trying not to record anything we can't do pretty much exactly like that live yeah. right right let's we'll do it right yeah yeah i mean there's things like um yeah, there's that guitar pedal that c9 or something like that from ele- yeah. electro harmonics that can do organ sounds um but you don't have a, a secondary guitar player to cover that for you so it would be hard to 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 right. ha- have something like that but yeah i do like a hammond i've got one right here in the studio and uh e- some- every song gets hammond in, in my book there's some good drumming on that one man yeah there was some good drumming on that three more sitting in my house mm-hmm. say so that we, we have to but you the we're probably not going to use them that much. We're not going to be a very key oriented band. It's, you know, yeah. We we have it's talked it's, about uh, doing getting a keyboard player or something like that, but the vibe that we have with just the four of us, uh, yeah. you know, is so good. And so it's so hard to find, uh, you know, guys that vibe, you know, as well as we vibe. Uh, to put it together to bring in another unknown element, the yeah. fifth element. I'm sure. sure if it's going to work or not. I don't know. It just seems like it, it, it potentially could taint the. Uh, the you, overall thing. You, you guys play three piece, right? Yes. Yeah. But why didn't you invite? Or why didn't you invite the third guy? Well, he, <laughs> 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 he but every time you add a person, you're adding that person's life, that person's schedule. Yep. Yeah. Maybe that person's substance abuse issue. Yeah. yeah. You're rolling the fucking dice every time you add a new. That is, that, that is true. That is true. It's like it's like it's like yeah. yeah. And that's actually why uh, Michael doesn't do the podcast. He lives an hour and a half away, and um, it's like herding cats. Yeah, I mean, we we struggle getting three people. That's why it's a three piece um, to rehearsals. So I totally understand adding a fifth element, um, but you know, we cheat because everything that that I that I need to play Shh. live. <laughs> I have this is this I'd like you to introduce you to my uh my uh my fourth member and that's my in ear rack that can control everything. It does my in ears, it does our click track, um and we're just locked in when we yeah. when we play because we've got we've got that safety net. So the speak. nice thing about that though is once you get used to it, it it's just kind of there. You can still play around, leave it. the song and yeah. land back where you need to. So we're actually playing, you know, yeah. when, when people come to see us play, they know that we're playing. They're, yeah. I'm not against using tracks, man. I mean, the crowd wants to be entertained. They don't get two shits. Yeah. They don't know any better. hundred percent. hundred percent. Most of the time. I would challenge, uh, Unless challenge a musician that just wants to be a douche. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is that right. most of the feedback is from, um, a musician. disgruntled musician. that's yeah. not playing. Right. Well, right. I'd like you to, if you would go to, um, Giza is gone. That's the name of, of our prog band. And um, we just released uh, a, a, a song from our show called King The King's Castle. And nice. I want you to, to go and watch that video and see all of the shit that's going on well, that, we're, that we're playing to. And we're, we're playing our asses off oh, to yeah. keep up with what's going on. There's yeah. video going on and there's you know, so much stuff going on. <laughs> But it was kind of a challenge. It was kind of a, a, a challenge to, to myself to, okay, can I control lights with MIDI using my, my, my rig? 
Yes. And so I spent six days programming lighting. Uh, can it, oh. Hey, can it control video? Yes. So I put together 90 minutes of all these abstract videos. And so it's... Uh, and then all three of us are playing. veteran musicians. Yeah. And so we just play our <clears> tails <throat> It's a show. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a circus. It's fun. It's a budget. Yeah. Uh, yeah, minimum budget. You know, video that what you guys are doing. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, but I'll tell you, you you have to work hard to get it right, and then when you get it right, nobody can take it away from you. Right. Which is what I told you the yep. other day. Yep. yep. So, yep. well, yeah, guys, um, how did you? You guys reached out to us to be on the show, right? How did you hear about us? Um, I just. Uh, <laughs> I am a diligent marketer, man, yeah. uh, and so I started I started researching and and uh, and looking at uh, different podcasts and shows and and things like that, and I'm like, hey, man, this is original music. We, yeah, I'm right. heck, you got nothing to lose but to, to reach that's out. Right. You know? That's exactly <laughs> right, brother. Make some new friends and, yep. and talk shop, right? Yeah, that's what the, that's what it's all about. Uh, you so know. you guys are in Atlanta, and and there was a band that moved from here. And moved to Atlanta. to Atlanta, named Kings Peak. Huh? Kings Peak. You guys know know this guys? No. Atlanta's a big city. Well, I know, I know. I've, it, hey, I, it, I played the reptile room out in, in Atlanta. Oh, the time. somber reptile. Yeah, <laughs> the somber reptile. Yeah, I've played that dumpster dive a couple of times yeah, myself, <laughs> and he'll never play there again. Yeah. Evidently, it's gone. Yeah, oh, it's okay. actually gone. Yeah. Um, well, that's awesome. I, I I'm I'm glad that. This is reaching out to like I just did a, a podcast with a band from Norway this morning. Oh, wow. and they were amazing. And they were amazing, yeah. Yeah. And um and and now, you know, Utah, I did Arizona the other day. And I, I enjoy having the conversation uh, uh with like minded people in different areas to see what are their what are their struggles, what are their what are the, what are the things that's working for them, um, and just having a conversation. So that that's why I do this, and, and to get you heard. And I appreciate that. And you know what? We we learned some stuff from you too. I mean, we're gonna we're definitely probably gonna try that that jump drive idea. That's that's a brilliant idea. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make it to where they can just put it in their car. Do you imprint your logo on it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. You can, you can actually make it a shape of a guitar or whatever you want yeah. it to be. Yeah. Let me show you one of these. Talk to him for a second. Yeah, we so we have a, a buddy named Nathan Oots, and he was the singer. Uh, he's been in a lot of bands. He's very well known around Atlanta. Uh, he played with Lynch Mob. Um, mm. He's got a tribute band called Pandora's Box that's yeah, uh, Aerosmith tribute, and it's amazing because he looks just like Steven Tyler, sounds just like yeah, Steven Tyler. Acts just like Acts too. just like <laughs> Steven Tyler. He actually sat in with us and did uh, Cashmere mm. by Zeppelin, yeah. which is the last huh? song of our set, uh, the only cover we do. Yeah, at the moment and murdered it. But he, his band, uh, uh, he he's got an original band called Resist and Bite, and yeah. he gave us the the drive, and it's in the shape of a little flying yeah. V guitar. And you take the thing off and stick it yeah. in your computer and enjoy. It. All right, so it's uh oh, is that there? It is yeah. right there. So it's a flying V. Boop. You take it off. It's the thumb drive. You just put it right in there, and um, and it's got okay. their their. You know, their whole album on, on one thumb drive. Um, so, yeah, I think these are the types of things that, uh, you know, along with the T-shirts and and, um, and uh, Hawkeye's G-strings. Yeah. Those are important. That's pretty strong, <laughs> by the way. That, uh, that you're going to uh, you're gonna need to do in order to be successful in the future. Yeah. We're going to need somebody other than Hawkeye to probably take the pictures in them. <laughs> 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 Actually, pretty much anybody except for anyone in this band. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go well. That's where you go back to uh, your mark. Your you treat it as a business and get uh, hell. You find a hot oh, model. Oh, no, you, th to be honest, guys, let's just be straight up honest. Just go on Chat GPT or any one of these AI things and say, uh, you know, give me a blah 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 and a G string with our logo on it, and it's going to make you something amazing. That's true. <laughs> that's that's true. Point. That's where we're at, guys. Yeah, yeah. You don't over, don't overthink it because it is pretty simple, I guess. Yeah, um, now, we're living in an amazing time where there's all kinds of technology and, and things that you know we we didn't have back in the day. I and mean, yeah. you, you you sound like you're you're our, our age. And yeah. 
So it, it, uh, it, it, you know, back in the day, I mean, we used to, I mean, remember we used to go around, put flyers on cars and, yeah. and, and, yeah. and stuff like that. And now you don't have to do that yeah. anymore. It's a different yeah. world now. Yeah. Well, are you using, what are you using for like a show? We, we've got a show on the 13th and it's just Facebook events. Um, it's multiple posts, uh, make a video promoting the show, those types of things. What, what are you guys doing for events you're going to do? That that's the same thing. We're we're trying to put out different um, videos. Um, I, I, I'm sort of into this new thing uh, where we're we're doing uh, little tutorials about our songs and stuff. Like uh, we just had Hawkeye make one. We're like, this is how you play the intro of our new song. Yeah, and he teaches how to play the intro, and that you know, and then we advertise the show uh, outside of that. So, uh, like I said, uh, I my my whole kind of concept is like build an emotional connection towards the song and towards the band. Yeah. So I really want to like, a, you know, maybe have Dave show, like, this is how you do a, a you know, a whatever fill, or this is how you do it. And, and people start getting used to seeing and knowing who Dave is, knowing who Hawkeye is, yeah. knowing, knowing who the, is in the band and kind of get familiar with the songs and, and posting those on TikTok and Twitter and, and uh, not Twitter X and Facebook and all of these social media things. And uh, what I realized um, is that you, you have to do it all the time. Yeah. It, it has to be very consistent. Yeah. You can't just do one here and there. It's like it has to be all the time where you're posting, 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 because people look at it at different time frames and there's yeah. all kinds of, yeah. and, you know, the algorithms and all that. So it, it's a why So we're posting on all of the platforms, um, you know, almost a, at least weekly, if, if not every few days yeah. of some kind of thing. And it may be something as simple as just like us in the band room walking around or, or doing saying something funny or something stupid, something yeah. stupid, yeah. whatever it connects them to to us emotionally. That's that's what we're looking to do, and and that's how we're promoting the show too. Like this is a huge event; you don't want to miss it. This is going to sell out, and we've already got we've got limited tickets, and uh, and that's why the every every four 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 or five times a year uh, for the scarcity of it all. Yeah. Well, th- um, I'm gonna I'm gonna open up Pandora's box and, and give you something that I just got turned on to. Um, so again, to, with the AI and the, in the, in the new technologies, um, I just started using something called Opus clips. And what that allows you to do is <clears throat> I can take this, uh, this, this whole podcast that's an hour and a half long and I can throw it into Opus clips and it will, it will it will automatically snip it up into thirty minute, I mean thirty second um, uh, highlights. Uh, Very cool. With captions, with my logo, with with everything, uh, and then what? then I can just download that and then just boom, throw up a clip. Boom, throw up a clip. You just end up with that that uh, humongous amount of content to be able to 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 just keep the algorithm going. Oh, okay, they're they're active. I think that's really all it's looking for. Are is that page active? Boom, 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 boom. Opus. That's huge, clips. man. I, I appreciate that because I, I I do it, and then I'm uploading to Canva and these other yep. things, and clipping and editing, and I spend hours a day yeah uh, working on on just this band, yeah. uh, working on those little clips and promotions and flyers and all that stuff. That could be a real game changer. Yeah. Have yeah. you guys seen the movie Over the Hedge? Over the Hedge, no. They'll squirrel and drink coffee and just start shaking and running in circles. Yeah, that's, that's pretty it. much. It. Well, you know, hey, <laughs> that's me too. Hey, I think we're the same person, actually. <laughs> got, 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 got. It's like uh, you got purple dreadlocks like Tracy Chapman. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, um, I literally have. Uh, this will be the third podcast in the can that I have to edit and get released uh, because of the holidays and and I got I was sick for two weeks. Uh, I'm, I'm backed up. So I'm, I'm looking for anything like Opus clips that can help me, uh, you know, get things done a little bit quicker and, and that kind of thing. But it's yeah, very cool. embrace it. It's here. We're, we're old. Thank you. It's going to be the new thing already is the new thing. Um, it's a learning man, when you're, when you're, when you've been uh, doing this so long, you've been used to a certain way and now the game yeah. has changed completely. Yeah. Yeah. We'd be basically have to learn all over again, but it's also sort of kind of exciting too. You know? Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. 
Um, all right, guys. Well, we appreciate you being on. Yeah. It's been a blast. Thank it, was, you. it was a great Thank podcast. You. And uh, what do you have uh, anything coming up that you want to promote or uh, what are your socials or, or website? Our next gig is on January 13th at the Blues Cat Hair Cedar. Our opening band is... St. George. The Deep Blue. St. George. George. Sorry. I'm from Cedar. <laughs> uh, Deep Blue is the opening band. And during the show, we're going to actually play uh, the, our first single as a band. We wrote together and recorded together a song called Thursday. Okay. And we're going to play that song four times so we can film it. So hopefully nice. by the fourth time, you'll love it. Yeah. Nice, <laughs> nice. nice. I mean, what what, cool. what are your socials? How do we how do people find you? Just sixstringrevolver dot com uh, on uh, on you know is our website, and you can see us on um, on um, Facebook at six six string revolver on Instagram six string revolver okay. uh, Twitter six string revolver. <laughs> Where yeah. do we find podcasts? I want to watch them. Um, so we're on YouTube. We are the original music podcast on YouTube. Uh, I am considering starting to do some stuff on X. And um, Instagram, the original music podcast on Instagram and Facebook. It's oh, cool. And just... if you want to be on the show, original music podcast at gmail.com or just DM us uh, like these guys did and uh, we'll have you on. Awesome. If, if you're good. No, if you're... I'm just kidding. <laughs> <If you're> good, <laughs> I'm just teasing. He's not, though. No. He's for real. Uh, yeah. Joking, not joking. <laughs> hey, uh, so the 13th. Yeah. We're all going to be rocking. Yes. You have a show. We're going to be rocking. Yeah. Roll. Our brothers on the other side yes. of the ocean are going to yes, be rocking sir. while we're rocking. I like great. it. I like it. All right, well, stay on. Stay inside the ocean. It's the other side. No. It's the same a, side. You don't cross any ocean. Get to them. Well, it's the other side <laughs> of the ocean. <laughs> hey, hey, we'll, some, well, there are tsunamis <laughs> going on right now. Hey, so. to some people, the Mississippi <laughs> is an ocean. That's true. <laughs> you know. The world's not flat. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. Hey, come on, quit it. It's right. shaped like a hot dog. Everybody knows that. <laughs> All right. Hang on the line. We want to talk to you after the show. And uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, really like your stuff. Six yeah. String Revolver. See you Fantastic. Guys. Thanks, guys. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. You're watching the Original Music Podcast.